Hi, and thank you for watching. As you may or may not know, Angelina Jolie was spotted in Ukraine on April 30th, and I believe there is a very specific reason for her traveling to Ukraine at this specific time. It was not only Jolie who went to Ukraine, but also Nancy Pelosi. But our focus has been on Jolie for quite some time now, as she would seem to be the focus of our enemy's predictive programming. From what we have been shown, her visit to Ukraine could very well be in preparation for a task that may have been assigned to her that could also be linked to a very specific and important passage in God's Word. That task may very well be linked to 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 3. For when they shall say, Peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. Something I would like you to keep in mind is the mentioning of the woman in travail in this passage, as it will link us to another passage that is very important concerning the timing of events before us. As I have pointed out over several years now, the enemy has shown us a detailed plan through which the Antichrist will be introduced to the world. This plan was cryptically hidden in vast numbers of entertainment media, but of which one with the title I Petco 2 would seem to be jam-packed with information on our enemy's plan to bring the Antichrist into the open. This animation came out in 2012 and provides information on planned future events that we have now seen played out, just as predicted with relevance to world events becoming very evident over the past two years, specifically when we consider this portion of the animation. In this scene, we see the face of a New World Order character displayed on a screen that is shouting at a person without a brain, lying next to several pharmaceutical products, and these have been at the center of most people's minds over the past two years. Many have asked me why I pay any attention to the plans of the enemy, and why I have spent so much time analyzing this animation. For me, the information in this animation provides context between what we see happening in the world and what was written in God's Word. If I did not pay attention to what was shown to us in this animation, I would not have been alerted to the fact that the media would be used to instill fear into the public, and that this fear would lead to people submitting themselves to the substances through which the enemy would defile their bodies by corrupting their DNA. This is not the only animation in which this is shown to us. Another, that goes into a lot more detail, is found in a music video by the group Disturbed, which I have also discussed in other videos. Through these animations that our enemy has used to show his plans in plain sight to the public, we also find context to what was written in God's Word. We can see how certain events that have been mentioned in the Word of God will be brought about in our world by our enemy. Once again, the Bible tells us that we should not be ignorant of our enemy's devices, because if we are, then he stands to gain an advantage over us. Lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. So, looking at a very specific scene from the iPad Go 2 animation, I believe what we are shown here is about to become a reality within the next few days. In this scene, we see a girl with a tiger on her back waving a peace flag, apparently trying to prevent a war, facing several approaching tanks. As I have explained before, Angelina Jolie has a very similar looking tiger tattooed on her back, and she is also in the perfect position to mediate between governments and militaries at war. Please listen to this excerpt from an interview on BBC Radio 4, in which she describes her role as the UN's goodwill ambassador. Notice that the role that she describes matches perfectly with what we are shown in the scene, and even more so when we consider the events that have transpired since February 24th of 2022. I really don't know. I always say I'll go where I'm needed, I don't know if I'm fit for politics with uh, but then I've also joked that I don't know if I have a skeleton left in my closet so I'm pretty I'm pretty <laughs> open and out there and I'm pretty um, I can take I can take a lot on the chin so that's good but um, I honestly will do whatever I think can really make change and right now I am able to work with a UN agency that is the most in the field of all the UN agencies to do a lot of work directly with the people in need. I'm also able to work with governments, and I'm also able to work with militaries. And so I sit in a very interesting place of being able to get a lot done, 
without a title and without it being about myself or my policies. So for now, I'll sit quiet. Oh, for now. That's fascinating. <laughs> As I've said before, the iPetco 2 animation is not the only predictive programming tool with which the enemy shows his plans to the public. I have also pointed out this video from the Infographic Show, another animated channel, that explained the start of the war between Ukraine and Russia almost exactly as it happened, but this explanation being given back in 2019. Please watch the video if you have not seen it yet. We have also seen how Germany and Poland have sent or pledged to send tanks to assist Ukraine in their fight with Russia. This comes after Russia has warned that outside interference could lead to World War III. Now whether there would be a significant event prior to the girl running out with her peace flag or not is not quite clear yet, but it is certainly a possibility when considering the information in these animations, with Berlin being pointed out as a specific target. Once again, I believe this is all just a show, and whether it is Russia or any other country that eventually escalates the current conflict into World War III does not really matter. World War III has been on the enemy's mind and part of his agenda since at least 1871, when this plan was first penned by Albert Pike. Our Heavenly Father tells us through Paul in 1 Thessalonians 5, that when they say peace and safety, great destruction will come over them and that they will not escape. It continues to say that we are not in darkness, and that this day will not catch us as a thief in the night, and that we should be comforted knowing that we are not appointed to wrath. How would this day not catch a person as a thief if they are not keeping an eye on what the enemy is doing? And I believe that is why our Heavenly Father has given us discernment and access to the plans of the enemy so that we can identify important aspects to watch for. This passage from 1 Thessalonians would also seem to tie in with what we read in Zechariah chapter 1, which I have discussed in several of the previous videos, linking the current events to the rider of the red horse. Please compare the following two passages that would seem to describe the situation that many believers currently face in this world, where the enemy is set on destroying God's people. For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Wherefore comfort yourselves together, and edify one another, even as also ye do. Then the angel of the Lord answered and said, O Lord of hosts, how long wilt thou not have mercy on Jerusalem, and on the cities of Judah, against which thou hast had indignation these threescore and ten years? And the Lord answered the angel that talked with me with good words and comfortable words. I'm of the opinion that both of these passages express the comfort that our Heavenly Father wants to convey to those who are experiencing the screws of the enemy tightening around their lives, because they have not deviated from their faith in the Lord, and many feel like they have reached the end of their strength. But what does this comfort refer to that is mentioned in these two passages? I believe it is clearly explained to us in Revelation 3. I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door, and no man can shut it. For thou hast a little strength, and hast kept my word, and hast not denied my name. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet, and to know that I have loved thee. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world, to try them that dwell upon the earth. Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. Another important aspect to consider is the fact that we are coming up on Israel's 74th birthday, and depending on which calendar one uses, Israel's Independence Day will be celebrated on May 6th on the Hebrew calendar, and May 14th on the Gregorian calendar. Given the timing of Jolie's arrival in Ukraine, it could very well point to Israel's estimation of this date, which will then be May 6th. This is also a very important milestone in which the day before this anniversary would be the last day on which a seven-year period 
or a week of years would still fit into a generation of 70 to 80 years as explained to us in Psalm 90. For those who are confused about this, think about this question. When would Israel celebrate the 81st birthday? It would be the day after reaching 80 years and 364 days, if we consider this on a Gregorian calendar. Israel would not be considered 81 years old until another 364 days have passed after the 80th birthday. Therefore, depending on which calendar applies, May 5th or May 13th could be marking very important dates that apply to the final generation of Israel, which is said to be 70 to 80 years. It is then also interesting to see that in this animation, the girl with the peace flag's attempts to broker peace is then interrupted when a celebration occurs in the background, and this celebration would seem to apply to a passage from Isaiah 21, which in the context of what is happening before us could be pointing us to Israel's birthday, which is a day that also applies to a woman in travail. Remember the woman in travail that was mentioned in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5? The travail leads up to a birth, and that then becomes the baby's birthday. So when we read about the woman in travail in God's word, the Bible is also telling us something about an upcoming birthday. A grievous vision is declared unto me. The treacherous dealer dealeth treacherously, and the spoiler spoileth. Go up, O Elam, besiege, O Media, all the signs thereof have I made to cease. Therefore are my loins filled with pain. Pangs have taken hold upon me as the pangs of a woman that travaileth. I was bowed down at the hearing of it. I was dismayed at the seeing of it. My heart panted. Fearfulness affrighted me. The night of my pleasure hath he turned into fear unto me. The night of my pleasure could refer to Israel's Independence Day, and when we read this article in which the upcoming celebrations are discussed, we see that pleasure and enjoyment are linked in this article to the pleasure mentioned in the passage from Isaiah 21. I found it also interesting to see the fireworks in the background of this image that was posted with this article. It would seem that Elam and Media, or modern-day Iran, would be behind the fear that will come over Israel and clues as to what may be coming have featured in this article in which Hamas is said to be preparing for a great battle. It is also quite possible that this passage from Isaiah 21 could be linked to the events explained in Isaiah 17, where the complete annihilation of Damascus is described, occurring during a single night and once again mentioning the fruits of the treacherous dealer and the spoiler that featured in Isaiah 21. And behold, at eventide trouble, and before the morning he is not. This is the portion of them that spoil us, and the lot of them that rob us. This destruction of Damascus may very well be demonstrated in this scene from the Ipetco 2 animation, where a woman dressed in what would seem to be a burqa is weeping for a child with a nuclear explosion in the background. Other interpretations for the scene are obviously also possible and could represent the same or a different event from the one described in Isaiah 17. We often see our enemy's predictive programming point to Berlin and Mecca as possible targets for a second 9-11, and there is a strong possibility that an attack on Berlin may result in Angelina Jolie rushing out with a peace flag to try and prevent further escalation but just to be interrupted by the great destruction mentioned in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. With her being in Ukraine at the moment, it would seem to fit the enemy's narrative and the Bible's timing perfectly. When considering the Middle East, Hamas has warned of a great battle that is coming. I have pointed out that the Ipetka 2 animation clearly associates this battle with a date, May 16th, when a very peculiar lunar eclipse will occur having symmetrical lunar and solar eclipses surrounding it. What is interesting is that I think the Word of God is showing us not only what to watch for, but even who to watch when it comes to looking for them to say peace and safety. I am about 99% sure that Angelina Jolie will be the person who will say peace and safety just before great destruction comes over the world. So please keep your eyes on her, and if you have news about her that you would like to share with others, who are also watching, please join my Telegram group where you are welcome to do so. 
We are approaching very serious world-changing events, and you want to be sure that you are part of the children of light, and not of those who are in darkness. So make use of the little time that remains to ensure that you can also escape the coming destruction, so that you can meet our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in the air, when all of this comes upon the world like a thief in the night. Remember that the Word of God shows us that being saved is not a guarantee that you will be found worthy to escape the coming destruction. The Word of God tells us that those who are saved or who have become servants of the Lord are divided into good and evil servants or wise and foolish virgins. Jesus tells us that those servants who are not expecting His return and who are not preparing themselves for His return will be cast out to receive their rewards with the unbelievers. But and if that servant say in his heart, My Lord delayeth His coming, and shall begin to beat the men's servants and maidens, and to eat and drink, and to be drunken, the Lord of that servant will come in a day when he looketh not for him, and at an hour when he is not aware, and will cut him in sunder, and will appoint him his portion with the unbelievers. So what are the differences between good and evil servants and wise and foolish virgins? Both of these groups have received salvation through faith in Jesus Christ as being the Son of God, but some qualities separate them to the extent that some will not escape. And even though some of these are believers, they will be treated as if they were unbelievers. I have done several studies on these in previous videos that you are welcome to watch, and I will also link some of them in the description. Please keep watching and please share this video with others to warn them, because our redemption is drawing very near. God bless.